System Shock 2. This is Shodan, you'll hear more about her. I haven't played the first game, but I understand it is about Shodan. Shodan is an AI, and she has some ideas about her own place, her own role in this world. She sees herself as the creator, the goddess. And as I understand, the first game is about trying to fight her as she takes over. In this, said 42 years later, in the future. Man finally perfects space travel. We can now travel enormous distances within a foreseeable space of time. You are part of the maiden voyage of the Von Braun, a massive spaceship sent out to investigate, conduct research in the universe, in outer space. But then something goes wrong. And you wake up and you don't remember anything. Not even your own identity. Your own role aboard this ship. You wake up remembering nothing other than your training. All you can tell is that it is chaos aboard this ship. But there is a voice, a voice that guides you. Someone is transmitting orders directly to the cyber interface that you have had implanted in your brain. And you don't really have anything else to go on, so you start following these orders. That's all I'm going to tell you about the overall plot. Throughout this game, you are in outer space. You are aboard the Von Braun, and the feeling of isolation is almost impossible to describe. You truly feel like you are as far away from home as you can possibly imagine. Whenever you look out a window, you can see distant stars passing by. You have no idea where you are. You just know you're far away from anything you know. You don't really have any allies aboard this ship. You don't meet survivors. You find bodies and you encounter enemies. There is nothing friendly on this ship. There is reminiscent of Silent Hill and abandonment of something friendly, something that should be inviting, something that should put you at ease, remind you of home, but it doesn't because it's abandoned and it's broken. Everywhere you go you see something left over 
from a struggle. You see something broken. You see blood. You you don't find any comfort. At most, you find proof that you are the only hope left. I'm not going to tell you exactly what might happen if you don't win, because the game does a far better job of explaining this with great effect than I possibly could with mere words. But it is quite a responsibility, and you can tell you're the only one who's still able to take on this responsibility. You fight basically two types, overall types of enemies. The biological and the technological. And this is the main theme of the game, really. The biological and organic versus the technological, the cold machine. You can upgrade your own abilities in those two directions. One complaint that needs to be put forth is the fact that if you only focus on the organic, you will not be as well prepared for this game as if you focus more, in fact, purely on the technological. You have to focus somewhat on the technological. And you aren't forced to focus at all on the biological. And that is one of its few detractors. To expand on the enemy types, the biological consists partially of your former crewmates. They aren't human anymore. There are traces, but they aren't human. They've been taken over by something. I won't spoil exactly what, but they remain human in appearance, mostly. And part of what is so terrifying about them is that with what is left of their self-control, they no longer have actual physical self-control. But they can still yell warnings towards you. And they do this. They ask you to run away. They, they try to save you as they are trying to kill you. The realization that as you're fighting them, they are fighting themselves, trying not to hurt you, is one of the most terrifying emotional experiences that I've ever had playing a video game. One of the most, in fact, of any form of fiction, any medium. You also fight later mutations, and I won't reveal what these appear in the form of. There are also actual alien creatures, including spiders. I'm not an arachnophobe, but these terrified me. 
And I would imagine they would do the same for almost anyone. Excuse me. I don't think I should reveal more of the biological. There are a few forms that are between the biological and the technological. But to move to the purely technological, the first you meet will be these helping robots. They are programmed to help anyone in need aboard the Von Braun. And the problem is that they malfunction. If you get too close to them, they will explode. And they don't realize this. They come at you, usually insisting that they, they are merely trying to help in a robotic, monotone voice. Sometimes malfunctioning auditively. And there are points where if you try to activate something, one of these robots will be summoned because what you just tried to activate isn't working and obviously this means that assistance should be sent. These robots are also quite creepy. You also face large mechs that are for security. You see, whatever it is that you are fighting has taken over the computers on the ship. You're not just fighting the men and women that they've taken over and perverted physically and mentally. You're fighting every security system aboard this massive ship. Any security camera that spots you will very quickly alert anyone in the vicinity unless you destroy it. And any turret, any automated security system will consider you its enemy. As you don't really get an introduction to what has happened, you find out as you go, you will discover many audio recordings, audio logs, which you all, you will store them all and you can listen to them as many times as you want. And each one is a tiny piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Slowly you will piece together what happened, when, how. It is not a soothing realization. It is not a comfortable story. But it is quite well written. And the voice acting, which is really what carries this, is rather good. I won't say exactly how, but Shodan will appear in this. And the arrogance, the behavior of her makes her a truly chilling character. Even if you 
play this only for her. If you've had someone describe her to you, if you've played the first game and know from there, even playing it just for her sake, I would say you will be satisfied. The characters are in general well written. This has a reasonable assortment of weapons. Any weapon needs certain upgrades for you to even operate it. You can't even fire a gun if you don't have a level one of standard weaponry. And it is important to think carefully about the different upgrades because not all of them are equally useful and there are weapons that you have little use for at all as stronger ones do come along. That's a good reason to replay this and use your upgrade points more wisely. I myself have played it at least half a dozen times. The atmosphere is the most important aspect here and it is constant. There is no time where you feel entirely safe. There is no point in this where you don't feel like anything living in your surroundings or anything mechanical. Even if there is something seemingly safe, you never feel safe. You always feel like everything around you is out to get you. You're living on borrowed time and your mission must not fail. Many complain about the graphics and they obviously do not hold up today. The game is slightly over 10 years old, but if you can play it in if you can play it with that in mind, I still recommend it. There is a high definition pack which is well worth downloading for the graphics. The game is a role-playing action first-person shooter hybrid. It isn't that much about the combat because if you fight everything you see or if you constantly run around and shoot or attack you will not succeed. You have to conserve your ammo and while your enemies can't exactly be snuck around it is wise to, if not entirely avoid them, then at least try to destroy them swiftly. Get rid of them without spending too much of your precious ammunition. There are countless choices to be made in this game. What to carry, you have a limited inventory what to upgrade, what to focus on, what to keep. And it makes it very interesting and you genuinely feel like you are in the real world. It's a science fiction setting, yes, but it does feel very real, making the terror all the more effective. Your weapons at least the firearms, anything that isn't just used to physically strike an enemy with will break over time and if you don't repair it in time it will suddenly jam, it will suddenly not function as you're firing it. A good piece of advice is to basically never use anything on fully automatic because 
it will break apart as you're emptying a couple of clips. The sound and the music is deeply haunting in this. The physical environments are as well very smartly designed and you really do feel like up until very recently there was life in this place the length is appropriate and the ending is incredible. One could argue that this is a bit lacking in boss fights, especially considering how difficult it can be at times. But again, the focus really is not on combat. While you will have to enter in a combat many times, the focus is on the story and the choices made. And if you make too many of the wrong choices, the boss fight will be quite difficult. If you like a first-person shooter setup for playing a video game. If you like role-playing games in a science fiction setting, and if you like a gripping atmosphere and a deeply disturbing story that has you thinking about the implications of the flesh and the metal, then I wholeheartedly recommend this. Even if you have to find a slightly older computer, at least temporarily.